Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you some time, for some time about God's spiritual work in your life. And most recently in the last two messages, specifically about your spiritual walk. You and I must have a spiritual walk of the Lord. And we've gone through two messages through the Old Testament scriptures looking at very important principles that you and I must be doers of if we're going to have the real, true spiritual walk of the Lord and see Him accomplish the things in our life. Tonight we're going to continue and we're going to be talking about New Testament scriptures. We begin in Luke chapter 1, verse 6. This is speaking about Zacharias and Elizabeth were the ones who had John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And it says about them, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. When it says ordinances, this is really the word which refers to that which is righteous. This is, comes from the word righteous. So it's that which is deemed right or righteous as Young's brings out, the righteousnesses of the Lord. That shows you something. You and I are to be righteous. You and I are to walk in the ways of the Lord. And how do you do it? You walk in all the commandments in His righteous ways, blameless. That's what they did. They had the walk. God wants you to have the walk. He wants you to be blameless. Remember, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot, that's holy, without blame, that is unrebukable and unreprovable in His sight. The way it's going to happen is because you are going to have the walk. And this walk we're talking about is not just because you do it once in a while. This is because this is your lifestyle. Present tense, the word walking. Present tense means continuous, repeated, ongoing action. This is the way you walk all the time. And we walk in the New Testament commandments of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of God, walking after the word of righteousness, and we do so we will be blameless. Now, as you do so, you'll become a disciple of the Lord. Now, one thing we must realize, this walk has to be consistent in your life. You can't just be on one minute and off another. Consistency is the key. It shows the lifestyle that you walk in the ways of the Lord. John 6, 66 makes a statement. From that time, many of his disciples, the ones who've been trained up in the ways of the Word, they went back. And they walked no more with them. They weren't walking with them anymore. They ceased to do this. They went backwards. Imperfect tense means were walking. That's why it's an ongoing process. Talking about in the past, they were walking no more. They stopped. If you stop walking with the Lord, you're not going to be right with Him. We must have a consistent walk consistently in our life. True disciples are not going to draw back. They're going to continue in the Word. They're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. It'll be shown by your track record, by your fruit, by your works, by the things that you do. Your walk needs to be consistent. We see over in John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, you and I are to follow him. If we follow after him, and this means to follow after him, accompanying him and joining him as a disciple because we're a hearer and a doer of the word, if you're really doing that, you will not walk in darkness. The light is the way of the word. Darkness is anything contrary to the word. That includes the way of the flesh, the way of sin, the way of the world, anything that's contrary to the truth. If you're really following him consistently, you won't walk in darkness and you will have the light of life will be manifest unto you. But he wants us to follow him and put his word first place. If you're truly following him, you will not walk in darkness. Why do people fall back into darkness? Because they don't consistently walk with the Lord. They're on and off. Map, John chapter 12, verse 35. Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. While you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. That shows you something. 
Anytime you get out of the light, anytime you get out of the Word and you're walking in darkness, now you actually come to the place where you don't even know where you're going. You get deceived. You're blinded spiritually, whether you think you, you're walking okay or not. But in reality, if you're not walking in the light, you will be blinded. You'll be blinded spiritually. You think you're doing okay. You see, man thinks he's doing okay in his own sight, but he's not. The only way you're going to know that you're walking the right path and walking in the ways of the Lord is you're going to walk in the light. Do not walk in the darkness or you'll be deceived. Spiritual blindness will come upon you and you won't even know where you are headed whatsoever. In John chapter 11, we see in verse 9, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. And if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. Otherwise, how can I get to the place of not stumbling, not making mistakes? By walking in the light of the Word of God. It means we don't have to sin. We can conquer sin. Remember, you're dead to sin. You're freed from sin now in Christ. And now, if you will walk in the light or walk in the day, which would be the Word of God, you won't stumble in your life. We can overcome all sin. One of the ways is walking in the light, making sure you're walking the right walk before the Lord. Another thing that's important is you must walk in the fear of the Lord. If you are going to walk with the Lord, every person is going to walk in the fear of the Lord. In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and they were edified, they were being built up, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and were multiplied. God's increase was working. Walking in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is what you and I are commanded to do. The whole duty of man is fear God and keep His commandments. The fear of the Lord will cause you to hate evil, so you won't walk in any evil ways whatsoever. Because you understand, if you walk in the ways of the Lord, you'll be blessed. But if you walk contrary to that, God's word is the judge, and the fear of the Lord will show you're going to get curses coming upon you. That's therefore, we are going to walk in the fear of the Lord, in line with his word, so we delight greatly in his commandments, we do the things he wants, and we will not walk in the ways of sin whatsoever. Another thing we see, your walk is to be a walk of faith. In Romans chapter 4, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. We walk in those steps. This is the God kind of faith. Remember Abraham? He had the God kind of faith. He called those things that were not being as being. Against hope, he believed in hope. He didn't consider his body now dead or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was fully persuaded that what God said he'd promised. He continued to give glory unto God. He, that was the faith, the faith of God that Abraham operated in. And it says to walk in the steps of this. And this is a different word for walk in the Greek. It is this word stokeo, which means to proceed in a row as the march of a soldier. Otherwise, when you're walking in faith, you're walking as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Because what are you going to do with your faith? You are going to fight the good fight of faith. You are going to conquer your enemies. You're going to resist the devil steadfast in the faith. You are going to be using your faith to overcome. This is the victory that overcomes or conquers the world and gives you the victory is what? Your faith. Your faith is what you do is walking as a soldier in the army of the Lord. You're going to take hold of the promises, everything that you do. You're going to move mountains with your faith. So you've got to understand, when you're operating in faith, you're operating in, as a soldier in the army of the Lord. You're operating in the authority that He's given you and conquering the enemies and overcoming in your life. We see another thing over in Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore we're buried with him by baptism to death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. God wants you walking now in newness of life. Brand new. Where's, where's the newness of life come? From Jesus Christ. You're brand new on the inside of us, outside of you. 
And what are we now walking after? In Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The newness of life is walking in the spirit of life. Of, it's in Christ Jesus. Now, that's the way we walk. We're going to walk in that newness of life in the spirit, overcome, possess all the promises in our life, and walk in victory. And it's interesting that as we do so, we go back a verse. He says, we're also going to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Remember, when you got born again, you got a brand new spirit. Your spirit is right with God. Your flesh is not right with God. Sin dwells in your flesh. You can either walk in the spirit, according to the, the word of God, and either according to your spirit leading you, or you could walk in the flesh with your flesh leading you. But sin dwells in the flesh. We cannot be walking after the flesh any longer. He goes on and says in Romans 8, 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You're to walk after the Spirit. By the way, if you look at the modern translations, the ones that are not Texas Receptus-based, they say there's therefore now no condemnation, condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, period, and it stops. Uh, they didn't believe that they, they were in compromise, see, these guys, that they didn't believe they had to walk in a certain way. They thought there'd be no condemnation just because they were in Christ Jesus. That's a lie. You will be condemned if you walk after the flesh because that's the way of sin. But if you walk after the way of the Spirit, you'll be walking after the way of the Word of God and righteousness, and then you will not have any condemnation or judgment coming upon you. We come down to verse 4, and he says this, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How can you see righteousness fulfilled in you, completed, accomplished in you, filled up? It's because you walk after the Spirit. You walk in line with the Word. You don't walk after the flesh. You walk after the flesh, what's that sin? It's going to produce unrighteousness in you. God wants us to walk in the way of the Word that brings the fulfillment of righteousness in your life as you walk in line with the Word. You put the Word of God first place. Another thing we see, Romans chapter 13, in verse 13. Let us walk honestly. Now, when it talks here about walking honestly, this is a word here which means, it says seemly or decently below, but really means to walk appropriately, to walk properly in line with the ways of the Word of God. That's the way we're to walk, as in the day, which means in the light. Not in rioting. Rioting is the reveling, carous, uh, uh, party-type spirit attitude, car carousing around. No. And drunkenness, which means intoxication of any kind. No intoxication, no running around on the party spirit. That's all of the world. Not in chambering. Chambering means living with someone who you are not married to. This is a word where the, someone you keep in the marriage bed with someone, cohabitation, but you didn't marry him. That is sin. It's amazing how many Christians today are living together with someone, and they're not, they're not married. They're in chambering. They're in trouble. Also in wantonness. That's unbridled lust. We cannot walk in unbridled lust. That's letting the flesh run us. No, we're to be temperate in all things. And not, not in strife, he says here. Strife is contention and strife. God doesn't want you getting in strife with anybody. He doesn't want you to be contentious with anybody whatsoever. You should be always walking in love, remember. Or in envying. Envious, jealous of others, or anything like that. No, these things, they need to be eliminated. What are you supposed to do? Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. When it says put on, this is the Greek word enduo, which means to clothe yourself, to sink into clothing. And this is your responsibility, by the way. It's a command to us because it's an imperative mood verb. It is a middle voice. The middle voice in the Greek means the subject is doing the action for his own benefit. So this is, you clothe yourself for your benefit with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You're to put it on. And how do you do it? Through the Word. And make not provision for the flesh. Provision actually means forethought. You're not going to have forethought for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You're not even going to give the flesh the time of day. That's why you're going to take your thoughts captive. Any thought that is inconsistent with the Word of God is either coming from the flesh or it's coming from the devil bringing something to you. You need to take that thought captive immediately. But especially the thoughts that come from the flesh, they're just trying to get you to fulfill the loss of the flesh. Now, we're not going to do that whatsoever. So what does God want? He wants you to walk appropriately, properly, in line with the Word, not in any of these evil things or in the flesh. But you're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is being clothed with the Word of God, so you're going to walk like Jesus. We're to become like Him. As you walk in the ways of the Lord, you're going to become a partaker of the divine nature and become like Him. Another thing we've got to realize, you don't walk like human nature people because you're born from above. You walk like someone from heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. These guys were Christians, but they were carnal in the flesh. He goes on and says, I fed you milk, not with meat. Hitherto you are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas you are, there is among you envying, strife, contention, divisions, dissension, these things should not be happening. And he says, are you not carnal? and walk as men. This is anthropos, which is like the normal human being out there. Walk is just like the, the world, people that are not born again. Are we to walk as like human beings? No. We're to walk as spirit, in spirit like Jesus Christ, spirit people. We walk in the spirit in line with the Word of God, not as mere men who aren't born again. They walk after the flesh and after the soul and whatever they want to do in their own sight instead of walking in the ways of the Lord. We see another thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. But as God has distributed to every man as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk. So are I ordained, ordain I in all the churches. Otherwise, whatever has God has given you and what he's called you, that's what you're to walk in. You're to fulfill the call of God on your life. We have a general call according to the word. We have a specific call according to the gifts, abilities, callings, anointings, whatever he might have put on your life. And you're to walk in them. You're to fulfill them. That's why you want to see what all the Lord wants you to do. You need to follow the call of God in your life. You are to walk after that and fulfill that. We also see in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. We renounced, which means to basically forbid and giving up the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He's talking about how they were handling the word of God and how they were doing things. Uh, they weren't going to be high and, and have had hidden things of dishonesty, things that were suppressed, secret sins in their life, or anything that was crafty or cunning or deceitful in any way, nor hailing the Word of God deceitfully in any way. No. There's a lot of people out there that handle the Word of God deceitfully because they leave out scriptures, because it doesn't fit in with their doctrine, or they ignore scriptures. That's a mistake. We've got to look at every scripture. The word of God is truth, and we've got to come in line with doing what the word says. We must walk and do things correctly in line with God's word for the manifestation of the truth because we are going to be, uh, have to prove our, or are going to give account to ourselves in the sight of God, and our conscience must be right that we're walking in line and doing the things that God wants us to do. Another thing we see in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight means that which is outward appearance, that which is of the natural realm, by the things we see. Now we walk according to the unseen realm. That's the way of the Spirit. You walk by faith. Your faith is what operates in the realm of the Spirit. 
contacts God to receive promises, comes against the enemy who are the spiritual enemies and conquers them. You can't go by your sight. If you be op operate by your sight, by what you are seeing or feeling or outwardly, then you're not in faith and you're not going to see the promises of God coming to pass. Another thing that's important in our walk, God wants to walk in us. And as we do what his word says, he will be able to walk in us. He says he comes to dwell in us and walk in us. But how can he do it? He can only do it if we meet the conditions. Verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Can we allow God to walk in us if we allow ourselves to be yoked together with unbelievers? No. When it says here about being yoked together, this means to have fellowship with one who is not an equal. Are you to have fellowship with anybody that's not an equal spiritually? No. That's why you don't fellowship with the people that are not born again. You also don't you fellowship with the people that aren't walking right with the Lord as well. You're not supposed to be having fellowship with them and yoked together with them. What fellowship, he goes on and says, has righteousness, which is what you are, with unrighteousness. This is actually the word lawlessness. Anamia, Young translates it correctly, lawlessness. How can you walk with anybody that's not walking in line with God's New Testament laws, which is what we walk after, the law of Christ, the law of liberty? No, you can't have any fellowship with someone that's not walking in line with the word. If so, it'll affect you. Remember, evil communications will corrupt good manners. You'll have a transfer of the effect of who you're in fellowship with. And you are around lawless people, you're going to get lawless because it's going to affect you. Remember what it says in Matthew 24, 12? Because of the abounding of lawlessness, the love of many will wax cold because they're allowing lawlessness to come in. It's going to have a transfer spirit and they are going to be in worse shape. What communion or fellowship has light with darkness? None. What concord or agreement has Christ with Belial? Belial is anything that's worthless. If it's not something that's important, then in line with God's word, you want to have nothing to do with it whatsoever. What part hath he that believeth with an infidel, which is one who's unfaithful one? Someone who's unfaithful. You don't want to have anything to do with an unfaithful person whatsoever. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? None. You are the temple of living God, as God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. So if you meet the conditions of the previous verses, God will walk in you. But if not, you're not going to see that happen. He says, I'll be their God and they shall be my people. And he says, wherefore, come out from among them. You've got to come out from all this and be separate. The word separate means mark off from others by boundaries. Separate yourself from that which is not of the Lord. You'll be contaminated. You don't touch unclean things, he said. He goes on and says, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Meaning that if you do touch the unclean thing, he's not going to receive you. Our walk must be a walk in righteousness, in holiness, separation from that is, that's not of the Lord, and we cannot allow ourselves to be yoked together with that which is not of God whatsoever. We also see in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 talks about that though we walk in the flesh, talking about we have a physical body, do we, how do we war then? We don't war after the flesh. We don't do things in the carnal realm. What do we do? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're going to war in the spirit, even though you're walking in the flesh as far as a physical body. You're always to operate in the spirit. You're to engage in spiritual warfare and conquer the spiritual enemies that are arrayed against you. Another thing about our walk, Galatians chapter 2. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, When Peter was come to Antioch, that's where Paul was, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. What was the problem? Peter, one of the apostles, you know, and here he comes. He's coming to Antioch and he sees Paul. Paul had to stand up against him. What was the problem here? For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. 
Well, nothing wrong with that. Where you know the two have become one. There isn't a Jew or Gentile anymore, as the Bible says. But when they were come, some Jews came. He withdrew and separated himself, fearing them that were of the circumcision. Then he said, well, I'm not going to have anything to do with you guys now. Huh. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, meaning that they were acting hypocritically too. You can't be hypocritical. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their hypocrisy. Dissimulation means their hypocrisy. It almost affected him. That's why you cannot be hypocritical. You'll affect other people. And you can't be around people that are hypocrites. Don't be around someone that says one thing and then does another, or acts one way one minute and then, well, you're a different person now. What happened to you? Why are you acting different? No. We cannot be around hypocrites. Look what he says. When I saw that they walked not uprightly, if you're hypocritical, you're not walking uprightly. If you're a certain way around certain people and then you're totally different around other people, you're a hypocrite. They walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter, before them all. You know, if he's going to demonstrate that before them, you've got to rebuke them before all. And that's exactly what he did. If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as to do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as to the Jews? He called them on the carpet and rebuked him because he was being hypocritical. You cannot be a hypocrite. Don't be in compromise. Be one who takes a stand for what's right, and that's the way you operate all the time. Do you function the same way? You know, you should be the same kind of person wherever you are. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because there's a battle going on. The flesh lusteth against the Spirit, the spirit against the flesh, they're contrary the one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would or what you are willing and wanting to do. That's important. You've got to crucify the flesh daily, as the Bible says. And you are going to always put the word first place, and you're going to choose the way of the word. The flesh is lusting against it. It's against it. There is a battle that will go on. Most all the time, you don't feel like getting the word, you don't feel like praying, you don't feel like casting out, you don't feel like doing spiritual things. Well, that's the flesh working against you. It doesn't want to do anything. We well, and I are to walk in the ways of the Spirit. Now, another thing. We can't have any of the works of the flesh. If we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord, we can't have any works of the flesh. That's adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, unbridled lust. We can't have these things. We can't be walking after these ways so whatsoever. These are all ways of the flesh. Idolatry, witchcraft. Now, by the way, this is pharmacia, but it's not talking about taking prescription drugs. It's not talking about that. Pharmacia, it's talking about using drugs for witchcraft purposes of sorcery or magical arts. Some Christians have gotten off track and thought that pharmakia means anything that you get from a drugstore or whatever all. Not so. Medicinal things that can be a help are not talking about this. This is talking about witchcraft. That's why it's translated here, witchcraft. Hatred, variance, which means strife or contention. Emulations, this is where you have actually have a punitive zeal against someone. Yeah, it's in, from a negative standpoint, it's a punitive zeal. Wrath, where you have a, a boiling anger, you just are in rage. Strife, this is someone who is partisan and fractious, and he put, it's, he's really, it just really means selfishness when you look it up and puts himself forward. All he cares about is himself. No, that's all the flesh. We can't have that. Seditions, seditions, any dissension or division, God doesn't want you to be around that. Heresies. That's anybody that's teaching doctrines that are contrary to the word. They've got to be called on the carpet, and they've got to be dealt with because you can't have heretical teachings that have come forth. Envyings, none of those. Murderers. And remember, if you have hatred in your heart, you're a murderer and don't have an internal life in you. Intoxication. Drunkenness really here means, mathe means intoxication. No intoxication of any kind should ever be in your life. Revelings, 
That's the party spirit of such like. As I tell you before, as I've, to as I've told you in the time past, those that do such things, they're walking in these ways, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Otherwise, your walk of the things you do is very important. It's going to determine whether you're going to inherit the kingdom of God or not in your life. Then we come down to verse 24. What's he want us to do? 24. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Crucify, you put it to death. You mortify the deeds of the body. You crucify that flesh daily. You refuse to let your flesh run you in any way with any of its affections or lusts or its desires. If we live in the Spirit, which we do, let us also walk in the Spirit. And this is this word that we saw, stokeo, before, like the march of a soldier. You're in the army of the Lord. You're representing Jesus Christ. You're going to operate, walk in an orderly way as a soldier in the army of the Lord in the realm of the Spirit. You're going to walk in His ways. We live in the Spirit because we've got a brand new Spirit. We've got to walk in the Spirit. How can you be living in the Spirit because you've got a new Spirit in you and then you're walking in the flesh? That's contrary. No. Your flesh, you are to crucify it continually and not give place to anything that is contrary to the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 2, talking about our walk in the New Testament. Ephesians 2, 2, where in time past you walked according to the course, this means the age of this world. And what was that? According to the prince of the power of the air. Who's that? That's the devil. That means anything that is of the world is of the devil. All that's in the world is not of the Father, remember it says. Anything that's of the world, a lot of people, Christians, think, oh, it's not so bad, you know, it's not terrible. If it's of the world, it's of the devil. Walking according to the age of this world is according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And how does it work? Among them also, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, whatever it wants to do, or the desire is the word thelemaim, which means the will, the will or just of the flesh or mind. And we're by nature, of course, the children of wrath, even as others. So can we walk after the lust of the flesh? No. Can we walk after the will of the flesh? It has a will. It wants something. It wants to do to do things. Or the will of the mind is not renewed. No, you can't walk after that either. That is walking after the way of the devil. We see over in Ephesians 2, verse 10, what does God want us to do? We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You're called to walk in the works of God, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You're to walk in the good works of the Lord. You're going to do everything that he says. You're going to do the works of God. You're going to cast out the demons. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to walk in the ways of of what Jesus did, anything that Jesus did, we're supposed to walk the same way. Imitate him, essentially. Be a true disciple following the way of the Lord. You also, as we mentioned earlier, the call of God is upon your life. Look what it says. Ephesians 4.1 I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Why is he a prisoner of the Lord? Because you and I have been bought with a price. We're not our own. We belong to him. You are his. As the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. This means the calling wherewith you are called. You're to walk worthy in a suitable manner, in a, in a proper way of the call that you have been called to. You're expected to fulfill the call. Remember, many are called, but only few are chosen. We have to fulfill the call if we're going to be chosen before the Lord. And how, how do you do it? You gotta, the only way you're going to do it is you've got to do it in the right manner. With all lowliness, that means you're going to have hum humility. With all meekness, a gentleness, a mildness. With long-suffering, not getting frustrated, upset, and you know, throwing in the towel and giving up on thing, people and so forth. Forbearing one another, which means to hold up one another in love. This is all selfless acts. Humility, no pride, 
meekness, a gentleness, a kindness, not harshness, not rough. You got to get those rough edges out of you. Long suffering, you know, no, we're, gonna, we're not going to be frustrating people, we're going to be long suffering. Holding them up, not tearing them down, not being critical or judgmental, operating in love. God wants us always to walk in the love of God at all times. Another thing that it speaks of in the New Testament, Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify on the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Vanity here means that which is devoid of truth. You don't walk in anything that's devoid of truth coming out of your mind. Again, how are you going to know? Because what you th comes into your mind, you think. What does the Word say? Is this in line with the Word? Okay. If it's not in line with the Word, uh, that's not from the Lord. That's devoid of truth. I'm going to cast that down. I'm going to refuse to give place to that whatsoever. That's why you've got to submit your mind to the Lord. Of course, the more your mind is renewed to the Word, the more you have the mind of Christ in you. But if not, you're going to be giving place to the enemy and walking in the flesh. Ephesians 5. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. This is the word mimetes, from where we get our word mimic. You do the same thing that someone does, you mimic them. You're an imitator, essentially. You're to be like you're mimicking God as dear children. He goes on and says, what do you do? And you walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us. You're to walk in love. This is agape love, a love that sees the valuableness, the precious, the importance of a person. Everybody is important. We should always operate in love toward them. That means we're not going to get in the retaliate against them. We're not going to be evil to them. We're not going to be mean to them. We're not going to be you know, doing things that are contrary. You're not going to be cursing people or whatever all. We're going to be blessing those, remember. You're going to walk in love, even loving your enemies at all times in your life. In verse 8, you were sometimes darkness, now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You've got to walk in the light of the Word of God. Again, put the Word first place in everything. These are all commands as well that we have. Verse 15, another thing. See then that you walk circumspectly. The word circumspectly is this word which means exactly and accurately. Exactly and accurately really doesn't mean diligently. It's been translated this way. It's a different word for diligently in the Greek. Exactly and accurately. We're supposed to get the precise, correct, accurate knowledge of God in us, and so we need to be doing it. We can't just walk however we want. We can't have our little interpretation of how we want to apply the Word in our life. No, exactly, accurately, in line with the Word of God. Do exactly what it says. Not as fools, but as wise. The ones that walk accurately and exactly are wise. The ones that don't, they're fools because they're not doing what the Word of God says and they're not going to see God's blessing in their life. Another thing we see, Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. Nevertheless, Whereunto you've already attained, otherwise the thing that you've learned and that you have come to the place of, of reached and attained, what this really means in your spiritual walk, because you've learned the Word, you've walked in the Word, you've got established in those things, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Otherwise, this should be your lifestyle now. This is be what you walk after. Otherwise, you just don't take some principle or something and walk in it for a moment to get some promise or blessing or whatever and then not continue in it. No. You're to walk by the same rule and mind the same thing. It should become your lifestyle, your consistency in what you do. And he goes on and says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. People that are walking in the Word of God, oh, they're going to be a good example. They're going to be someone you're going to see that, hey, that person's walking in line with the Word. If you've got somebody that's not walking in line with the Word, now, they're not somebody you want to follow after. You know, you know, that's a bad example. You want to get away from that kind of person. That's, that's going to have a negative effect upon you. And he goes on, he says, for many walk. And now he's saying what the problem is. 
Many walk, of whom I've told you often, and now tell you even weeping, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because they're not walking in the Spirit. What were they doing? It says their end is destruction. <laughs> That's the word, apelia, utter destruction. Whose God is their belly. <laughs> they're gluttons. Their flesh is running them. Their belly's running them. Whose glory's in their shame. Who mind earthly things. Are we supposed to be minding earthly things? No. We're to be seeking the things above, not the things on the earth. We're not to be minding earthly things. We're to be, um, have our mind set on spiritual things, the things of the Word of God. So, if you're walking after your belly running you, anybody that's gluttonous is walking, ba basically, their God is their belly, whether they want to admit it or not. Or minding earthly things, same thing here, they're walking contrary to the Word. Notice, their end is destruction. They're not going to be saved. They're enemies of the cross of Christ. And notice, he said, many are walking this way. That's quite an indictment against the, against the body of Christ. Nobody should be walking this way. Everybody should be walking in the Spirit, not according to the flesh, with a mind renewed to the truth, not some mind that is after earthly things whatsoever. We go over to Colossians chapter 1. In order to walk this walk, of course, you've got to get the Word in you, which means you've got to get knowledge and then put it in operation, producing spiritual understanding and wisdom in your life. Colossians 1.9 For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. The word knowledge here, again, is precise, correct knowledge. God wants you to get precise, correct, accurate knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So that you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have wisdom. What's going to be the purpose for that? That you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. Not so you can get promises and get the things you want for yourself and then forget about following the way of the Lord. No. What's the purpose for it? The first thing is walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. Because your walk is so important. You're to please God in everything that you do. Being fruitful in every good work as well. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Being empowered with all power, dunamo, power, or strengthened with all power, dunamis, according to his glorious power, or the manifestation of the power of his glory. To be steadfast, this is patience, which means steadfastness, and long-suffering with joyfulness. That's what the Word's going to produce in you. And it's going to be evident by your walk. You're to walk worthy of the Lord. When you do so, you'll please the Lord. That's why God wants you to get the Word in you, get knowledge, get understanding, get wisdom. Remember in the Proverbs it says, get wisdom, it's the principal thing. You've got to get that in your life. And you get it as you do what the Word says. Here's another important scripture. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. As you've therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. It isn't receive him, get my ticket to heaven, and then walk in the flesh and do whatever I want. No. Now you're to walk in him. How do you walk in him? In line with the word. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. You're going to operate in faith, as you've been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Faith always has thanksgiving coming forth as you're thanking him, as you're taking hold of the promises and speaking things into being. So God wants you to walk rooted and build up in him through the word, established in the faith, that's because of the word in you, and you're putting the word in operation, abounding with thanksgiving, thanking him for the performance of his promises in your life and bringing forth what he purposes. Then he comes to Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. We come back to dealing with that flesh. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. You've got to put them to death. That's what the word mortify means. Put them to death. <laughs> you can't let this happen. Fornication, uncleanness, any kind of uncleanness, inordinate affection, anything that is a, of an evil kind of a desire, evil concupiscence, this is longing for things that are forbidden, covetousness, a greedy desire to have more, 
greedy desire for gain. I want, I want, I want. No, God prospers the work of your hands. Don't get this greedy thing. That's, in fact, it's, it's idolatrous. You're making the money or making possessions or whatever it is you're coveting after an idol in your life. No, God wants to, he'll prosper the work of your hands and he'll bless you with things. Don't let yourself get greedy for gain and be idolatrous. Which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience? They get cursed for it. This judgments come upon them. In the which you also walk sometime when you lived in them. That's where we were before. But now you also put off all these. Not only do you put those things off, but you put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fil filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one to another, seeing you put off the old man with his deeds. And you put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, precise, correct knowledge, after the image of him that created him. And now you're going to walk in the Spirit. You're going to walk in line with the Word. See, it's essential. God's looking at your walk. He's looking at your works. He's looking at your fruit. Your walk shows whether you're really following the Lord or not. And that's why we've got to walk in line with the Word of God. How about dealing with people out there in the world? Colossians 4, 5. He wants you to walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. That means don't let people out there in the world steal your time. Or let anybody, even Christians, that might try to steal your time. Redeeming your time. Your time is important. You need to use your time wisely for the things that God wants. You want to walk in wisdom towards those that are without. Again, don't let people be time wasters for you and pull you down and so you don't get things accomplished. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. That you would walk worthy of God. Just because you're, you know, born again doesn't mean you're walking worthy of God. It's your, what you're doing consistently. Who's called you into his kingdom and glory. Meaning, if you do walk worthy of law of God, you will come into his kingdom and you will see the glory of God manifested. If you don't walk worthy of the Lord, of course, you're walking in sin. You're not going to be operating in the kingdom. You're not going to be uh, up and see the glory of God manifest whatsoever. You won't be inheriting it, of course, if you walk in the ways of sin. We see another scripture in 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you've received of us how you ought to walk. The word ought is a word die, which means necessary as binding. Translated must the majority of times. It's a covenant statement, a covenant word. How you must walk and to please God. That tells you something. Your walk is not just, I'll try to do the best if I can. No, that's not it. Your walk, men, most of these words were walk as commands, telling commands to do it. If we looked at them, most of them were imperative mood. You're commanded to do it. That means you must, how you must walk and to please God so that you would abound more and more. And of course, in the next verse, he talks about it. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. How can you walk and please God? You obey the commandments of Jesus Christ. You follow the law of Christ. You obey what he tells you to do. In fact, you're supposed to abound more and more. You're supposed to increase in it. You should be increasing in walking and pleasing God in all the things that you do. We see another one in verse 12. That you may walk honestly, again, this is appropriate and properly, towards those that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. Otherwise, Walk in such a way that nobody's going to show reproach against you. You always walk in love. You always walk kind to people. You don't let, walk in such a way that anybody on the outside would look at you and think that you're, there's something you're not right. Otherwise, you shouldn't show yourself to be hypocritical. You can't say, I'm a Christian, and then you're walking in the ways and doing all these evil things. Well, that's, that's not walking appropriately for other people. They should see the light of Jesus Christ in the, the fruit of Jesus Christ in your life. That's important. We need to have a good report with others. Also, in dealing with 
people in the body of Christ were also instructed what to do. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, this is a command, not a suggestion, not if you feel like it, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother. Now this is not talking about a worldly person. This is talking about a Christian. Every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition that you received of us. Basically, if there's somebody who's a brother who's not walking in line with the Word of God that you have learned and you're walking in line with, you're not going to have fellowship with that person. You're going to withdraw yourself. For instance, some people think that, well, I should just be able to have fellowship with anybody. Well, I'm going to have a prayer meeting. Am I going to pray with a guy who doesn't believe in speaking in tongues? No way. <laughs> Because when I'm praying, I'm going to pray with my spirit and tongues, and I'm going to pray with my understanding in line with the Word. Well, you might offend them, so maybe I shouldn't do that. No, I'd be compromising, wouldn't it? Am I going to compromise in anything for some, someone? Never. Am I going to go or minister to someone and they don't believe in casting out demons, so oh, I better not try to do that to help them, and that's what they need? No. You're not going to compromise anything. Any brother that's walking disorderly, not in line with the Word of God, out of ranks, not after the tradition that's been received of us, which would be the Word of God, you withdraw yourselves. You're not going to have fellowship with them. You're not going to be doing these things. This is not, you know, some people think, oh, you're acting like you're more holier than thou. No, I'm following the Word of God. You know, they'll be critical to you. That's, this is the way it's going to be. You just got to know you got to do this. you got to walk right. Someone's not walking right, I'm not going to have fellowship with them. That's the way it is. I'm going to withdraw myself from that person. Verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. This is another way people aren't walking right. Working not at all, but are busy buddies. Do you want to have fellowship with someone that's a busy buddy? No. You know, one of the things that's biggest, that used to be the busy buddy people are always, you know, in someone's business or on the phone forever talking about, you know, all these things. Now the biggest busy buddy is Facebook <laughs> and all this social media stuff, you know. Want to know everybody's business, you know. And spend hours on, on those kind of things instead of being in the Word of God. No, you don't be walking with people that are nosy and busy buddies and not working and even if they are working and they're busy buddies the rest of the time, no, they should be in the Word. We should be seeking after the things of God. Now, that's not saying that you can't, Facebook can be used for good things as long as you use it in the right way. We're not being, putting that down. But if that's what you're doing, you're looking at every, what, everybody's business and that's all you do, that's a problem there. That's walking disorderly. We're supposed to mind, do our own, mind our own business, do our own work, and you know, carry out the things that God wants for us to do. And we're not going to have fellowship with those kind of people. You know what they're going to be filled up with, all kinds of garbage. They're not going to be filled up with the Word because they're not putting the Word first place. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, unbridled lust, all kinds of des lust, desires, cravings, excessive wine. You don't have anything to do with alcohol, remember. Revelings, the party spirit, the banqueting, the carousing, the abominable idolaters, idolatries, anything that's contrary to the word of God, anything that's contrary to law would be in line with God's, uh, God's laws. You don't want to be doing anything like that whatsoever. They think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. People will think, well, why won't you do this? Well, it's because I'm not walking in those ways anymore. Witness to them, tell them the truth, and call them to repentance and tell them what they need to do. You know, don't back off of telling people the truth because they need to have an opportunity to come to repentance and they may not have heard the truth. You might be the vessel to tell them. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Now the devil also walks and he'd see what's he doing? He's seeking to devour you. 1 Peter 5.8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What are you to do? 
Resist steadfast in the faith. You got to be ready to resist the devil. And he walks about all kinds of ways and he can use people. People used of him trying to get to you. Uh, you got to be ready to guard yourself so you don't let yourself fall into any kind of temptations or the attacks that the enemy brings against you. Here's another area about not dealing that it speaks of, of regarding the flesh and also rebellion to authority. 2 Peter 2.10 Chiefly them that walk after the fl flesh in the lust of uncleanness, any kind of defilement, despising government. This is the word kuriotes, which means lordship. It's the word kurios means lord. Despise means really to think little or nothing of lordship. This is the person that doesn't really think anything about Jesus being lord over their life. They just try to do the best they can, you know. They don't really think of him that's submitting to him as their lord. They like he's their savior and give me my ticket to heaven, but forget about being telling me everything, directing me in everything I'm supposed to do. <laughs> They're despising, thinking little of lordship. What kind of people are these? They're presumptuous, are they? They're self-willed. They're really just running their life from themselves. Do we live our life to ourselves? No, we live unto him, not unto ourselves. Not afraid to speak evil of dignities. These people just speak whatever they want to do. You can tell they're run by self. You cannot be that way any longer. Another thing we see, you're going to run into these kind. 2 Peter 3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. The mockers, they're following their own lusts, doing whatever they want to do. You will see persecution. All that live godly will suffer persecution. You will be mocked by those people, and they're out there. They're walking after their own lusts. You, know, you just know that these people, of course, are all hypocritical. Say one thing, do another. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. How can you know that the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you and keeps you cleansed? because you walk in the light. And he automatically then will, he's the one who applies the blood, remember. If we walk in the light, that's our responsibility, which would be the word, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Of course, the other way, if you do sin, what do you do? You confess your sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, so we get rid of the righteousness. We need to be sure we're walking in the light and doing what the Word says if we're going to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. 1 John 2, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Otherwise, if you say you're a Christian, you should be walking like a Christian. If you say you're abiding in the Lord, you should be walking and doing the same thing that the Word of God says. You can't say, I'm abiding in Him, and then not doing the Word of God. That makes you false. That's a false brethren. That's someone who, essentially, they're hypocritical away, saying one, hypocritical in saying one minute that they're such and such, and then not walking in the ways of the Lord. We see another thing in verse 11. He that hateth his brothers in darkness, and he walks in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Again, it shows you. Anytime you get outside of the word of God, now you can't see. You can't even figure things out or what's right. You're in darkness. You're walking in darkness. You're, it's blinded your eyes. You will not be able to spiritually discern things properly. You won't, you won't have, have revelation from the Lord. You won't have discernment on things. In fact, your discernment will be wrong because you'll be seeing things from, not from the light, but you'll be seeing it through blinded eyes and you'll be deceived. So we've got to make sure we're not walking in darkness. That's why we've seen, you know, how come we got so many people that are, get, have all these crazy things they believe and stuff? They're walking in darkness. They're, they're totally deceived and they get this, their mind gets, uh, they get reprobate minds and they're just way off 
in all these different directions. Even among Christians, you see this, unfortunately. 2 John, verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we received a commandment from the Father. Walking in truth, that's the way your life is. You walk in line with the Word. Whatever the Word says, that's what you're going to do. If it's not in line with the Word, you're not going to do it. That's when you walk in sin, if you do. Verse 6, this is love. What's really love to God? That we walk after His commandments. It's not a feeling. It's action, isn't it? If you love me, keep my commandments. This is love, that we walk after His commandments. And of course, that would be anything that He tells you to do. And then He says, this is commandment, as you've heard from the beginning, that we should walk in it. We're supposed to walk in line with His commandments of the New Testament. Walking after His commandments shows that you love the Lord. You can't say out of your mouth, I love the Lord, and then not walk in His ways. That, again, makes you hypocritical. Again, what is the biggest thing that you hear objections from people out there in the world against Christians? They're a bunch of hypocrites. You hear it all the time. Why? Because they probably are. They do one thing one minute, and then they do another thing another minute. That should not be. Jude, verse 16. These are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lusts, their mouths speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. What that means is, oh, I'll, I'll treat this guy real good because I'm going to get an advantage some way. He'll, he'll, he'll give me some, uh, maybe I'll get a promotion or I'll get some blessing or something like that. You can't be any of these. We don't murmur. We don't complain. We don't walk after our own lusts. We don't speak great swelling word. That's prideful people. And we don't treat someone a certain way because I want to get an advantage from them and then treat someone else a different way, you know. It reminds me of the church that would bust in people and the people that wore the real nice clothing and looked good, they put them in all the places where the cameras would see them. And the people that they brought in, the poor people from the bus, they had a section over here where the cameras would never see them. <laughs> They're in trouble. You can't have respect to persons. You can't do things because of how it's going to look. No, we can't be doing that kind of stuff. That is respect of persons. Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. You should walk after their own ungodly lust. Ungodly people out there. What are we to do? Preach the gospel to them. Call them to repentance. Give them the truth of the word. Bind the devils in them. Thank the Father for bringing them to repentance. Revelation chapter 3, verse 4. In fact, let's go back to verse 1. Here he says, and this is important for all Christians, you can't be a Christian in name only. There's a lot of them there are. They're a Christian, but then you look at their life, where's all the fruit? Where's all the works? You know? He says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, but you're dead. <laughs> that means you're not the real deal. You're a Christian in name only. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. Otherwise, a whole bunch has died, and now more things are about ready to die. For I've not found thy works perfect. The word perfect is not right. It's the word pleroo, which means to be full or filled up, fulfilled. Otherwise, you and me, all of our works are to be fulfilled before God as we're working out our own salvation and doing all the things to bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and walk in the, possess the promises and become like the Lord. These guys were doing the opposite. Remember, therefore, how you received. These people had received at one point and heard they were supposed to come back to where they were before and hold fast and repent, change your mind. And then he says, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Otherwise, judgment is coming to you. He says, thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. 
They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. How are we to walk? We're to walk with him in white. White is righteousness, because they're worthy. Why are they able to walk in righteousness? Because they didn't defile their garments. Anybody that defiles their garments is not white. They're dirty. They have darkness. They are not worthy before the Lord. And notice he said only a few are like that. And then in verse 5, it tells you quite a statement. He that conquers and carries off the victory, the same will be clothed in white raiment. Well, that tells you who are the ones that are being with the right white raiment, which is righteousness. The one who is not defiled, the one who's conquering and carrying off the victory over the devil, over the flesh, over the world. They're walking in line with the word. But look what happens to the other guys. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Well, this guy wouldn't because he's overcome and he's, well, he's got white raiment. But how about the guy that's defiled? He's going to get his name blotted out of the book of life. He's not going to be saved. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. That's the guy who's conquered and carried off the victory. Your walk is important. You walk undefiled, you're going to get your name blotted out. That's quite a statement. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. How are, what are, we, how are we supposed to be? We're to be watching spiritually. We're to be keeping our garments, which means we're keeping on the word of God on us. Lest he walk naked, what's someone who's naked? He's not clothed. That means you're obviously not walking in the ways of the Word. You have not clothed yourself with all the things of God, the Word. And they see a shame. You're going to be in trouble. You're going to get wiped out by the enemy if you don't have, you're not watching and keeping your garments and you haven't got the garments of God on. You're walking naked. Remember what it talks about. If you walk naked, God will turn himself away from you. When he comes to the church, he's walking in the church to see. We, we saw that scripture before, but we'll just... For you who didn't see this, this is pointing towards the end time church. The Lord thy God walks in the midst of the camp, that's the type of the church, to deliver thee, to give up thine enemies before thee. He wants us all to be delivered. Therefore thy camp, the church, shall be holy. He wants you to be holy. That he sees no nakedness unclean thing is nakedness actually the word means what, what nakedness means you haven't put on the things of god so that you'll be righteous and if you haven't then you're walking in something so what now you're all defiled you're all unclean you're naked before god and what's it say he's going to do he's going to turn away from thee we've got to walk in the way of the lord revelation 21 speaks of the nations that are being saved, that will be saved. Revelation 21, 24, the nations of them which are saved, mistaken in the King James, not are saved, past tense, present tense, are being saved. Otherwise, they're doing what they should do to see the salvation of the Lord shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. This is talking about those that are going to be walking in the New Jerusalem. Who are the ones? The ones that are being saved means that they have carried out their salvation. They're walking in the light of it, and they bring their glory and honor. This means it's their ongoing walk, which is what they've been doing in order to be saved to begin with showing that it's an ongoing lifestyle. You walk in the light. Third John, one last scripture. Or up to. Verse 3, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that's in thee. That's the word that's in us. Even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That's quite a statement. God has no greater joy than to see that you and I are walking in truth. What kind of a walk do you have? 
you got to have the walk. You can't have the talk without the walk. You got to have the be the real deal. You can't be Christian in name only. You got to have the real walk evidenced by your works, by your fruit, by all the things you do. He says, I rejoice greatly. I testify the truth that's in thee. That's the word that's in you. That's the only way you're going to walk in the truth, of course. You walk in the truth consistently. That is what God wants. He will have great joy because you're walking the truth. You're going to be walking in the way of the word of God. You're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to be walking in victory, conquering, overcoming, bringing forth fruit. You're going to be holy. You're going to be righteous. You're going to be blameless, as we saw. You're going to be declared righteous before him. You'll fulfill the works of God, all the things that he said. You're going to be walking in the spirit. You're going to be overcoming everything. And you're not going to be walking in the flesh at all. You're going to be walking uprightly in the way of the Lord. And you're going to see God's blessings come upon you and overtake you. Your walk is extremely important. You do this, then you're going to please the Lord, and you're going to see God's blessings come upon you in your life. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of how I'm to walk. I will walk in line with the commandments of the New Testament the word of righteousness, and I will walk in obedience, blameless. I will never go back as those one disciples did. I will always walk in line with the word. I will never walk in darkness. I will not walk in the flesh. I will not walk in the world. I will not walk in sin. I will walk in righteousness, in the way of the Spirit, I will walk accurately, exactly, according to the knowledge of God. I will never let my belly be my God. And I will not mind earthly things. I will mind heavenly things. And I will walk worthy of you in obedience, by faith, continually, as a soldier in the army of the Lord, pleasing you walking appropriately in line with your word. I will never be a busy buddy. I will walk in line with the word. I will never be a hypocrite. I will not compromise. I will not walk after lust. I will walk in the light. And I will not compromise around anybody. I am walking in line with the word of God the truth after the commandments of the New Testament, undefiled, having conquered the enemies, carried off the victory, clothed with the clothing of God, God's clothes on, walking in the way of salvation, working out my own salvation, walking in the truth, in obedience to the Word of God. As I do this, I will please the Lord. I will walk worthy of the calling and fulfill that calling. I will have an entrance into the kingdom. I will see the blessings of God come upon me in my life. And I will shown to be, I'll be shown to be righteous and blameless before the Lord. Thank you. I will order my life to walk after your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. You do this, you're going to walk in victory. That means we got to put off all those things that said. We got to crucify all that. You got to cut, not let yourself give place to all those things that were brought forth. Make sure you're walking in line with the word in every area of your life. Father, we thank you and praise you for all that's been brought forth this night as well as in the other two messages, bringing forth the revelation of the things that we must walk after. Thank you that we're putting the word first place. We're walking in your ways. We are not Christians in name only. We will show ourselves to be the real deal, the works of God. They will be fulfilled in our life, and we will show forth that we are the true children of God walking in the truth. Father, I thank you. There's going to be much fruit 
in our life. And we're going to walk blameless before you in righteousness all the days of our life because we are hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.